Okay. <laughs> so at Talk Live is a collaborative project of ASCD Emerging Leader Alumni Affiliate and Pakistan ASCD, which are affiliates of ASCD. They're working to support and empower educators globally. To watch our previous show, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would like to introduce my guests today. The first one is Tamara Masowski, and she's an international educator, advisor, and coach who has taught in Singapore, New York City, and Edmonton, Canada. She was a full-time classroom teacher for 14 years and also holds experience as a teaching assistant and an instructional coordinator. She left the full-time classroom teaching role to transition into more teaching support she remains connected to everyday school life students by supporting schools as a substitute teacher. Tamara has taught hundreds of elementary aged students since 1998 in rural, suburban, and urban settings. She also has collaborated with teachers and school leaders to develop teaching practices. Her areas of speciality are educating students through a whole child education lens elevating student voice and inclusive classroom practices. She has presented at teacher and educational leadership conferences in places such as Nashville, Boston, Hong Kong, and Bangkok. She has hosted a whole child institute in Singapore for school leaders from Manila, Philippines. She is the consultant for ASCD whole child tenants in the thinking school project in Pakistan. So this is uh, all for Tamara, and we have our second guest, Mr. Omer Qureshi. He is the founder and executive director of Pakistan ASCD and the project director of Thinking Schools Pakistan. He holds the honor of ASCD Emerging Leader title and known as an advocate of quality and authentic education in Pakistan and abroad. His contribution and advocacy of teachers' development, leadership practices and policies is widely listened and appreciated He's certified in advanced educational leadership from College of Education, Harvard University, and had been a keynote speaker and conference presenter at many conferences worldwide. So now let's move on to a few questions from our guests. My first question will be from Tammy. Tammy, will you please tell us and our audience about ASCD Whole Child and how it is important to be a whole child school? Sure. I, I also want to thank you for hosting the show today. <laughs> it's kind of nice to be a guest. Um, so thank you. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we couldn't have David with us um, due to a tech issue, but we'll have him on another day. So um, I'm happy to talk about the whole child piece of the Thinking Schools project. Um, so ASCD Whole Child is an initiative that the organization put together in 2007, and um, it's all based on research around um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So um, when we when they when they took those pieces and they looked at kind of the fundamental needs of people, um, they built that into well, what does that look like if we're going to educate children? And so what they've done is. Um, they, meaning the the developers at ASCD, um, came up with uh, five tenets of a whole child education. And so um, we have uh, the safety piece, uh, a healthy piece. Are students engaged? Are they challenged? And are they supported? And in each of those five tenets, and actually there's a sixth piece, which is um, is this whole approach sustainable in the culture of the school, which is a really important piece, obviously. Um, so within each of those tenants, there are indicators for educators to go through to ensure that um, in their school setting and in their classroom settings, they're meeting all of these pieces in which students are safe. So what does our what do we have in place in our school to ensure the safety of students? How are, how are we addressing the emotional, social, and physical needs of our students to keep them healthy? How are we engaging them in the classroom environment? What is it that we're putting in place to make sure that they also feel challenged when they're in the classroom? And what are those extra supports that are in place to make sure that they all have all of those needs met? So those are, um, kind of the, the building blocks of the whole child um, 
initiative. And recently, ASCD has kind of built that out into a larger network. So now um, there's hundreds of schools across the globe right now um, in which uh, schools have signed up for a network. So they have um, a bunch of professional learning pieces built into not only these pieces about the tenants and indicators to help teachers build out that in their school, but they also have um, videos and webinars and access to experts in those areas to help them build that out in their schools. So it's it's really this huge network of uh, faculty at a ASCD, as well as all of these other educators in different places who are building out this whole child education in their schools. Okay, and what do you think is the progression in the thinking schools? So what we have planned is um, because um, we have kind of planned out a five-year uh, plan, I guess you would call it, um, for how we will build out each piece of the whole child network. So um, the first year um, coming up in a few months, we'll be working on the research part of it and the, the tenants and the indicators, which I've just kind of briefly gone through. Um, so that's going to be really the focus in the initial stages of, of building out the school. And then as the years progress, we're building in other pieces. So we'll be looking at um, differentiated instruction will be one of the pieces, um, back, um, understanding by design. So it's backwards planning um, for teachers to build out their curriculum. Um, we'll be looking at, uh, sorry. My mind just went blank. It's getting a little bit late. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it, so we've, we've got a number of pieces built in. Um, sorry, there's another piece that I wanted to, oh, inquiry-based teaching and concept-based teaching too. So um, we're making sure that we address all of the, um, the essential pieces of making sure that students are getting all of their needs met in the way that we know that they should. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, Sam, would you like to tell us something about the background of Pakistan ASCD and the thinking schools in Pakistan? Right, um, thank you, first of all. Uh, this Today, this at Talk Live is a bit different for me and Terry both. I mean, we, we used to be as host of this program, but thank you. And uh, the, today, why we planned, obviously, we wanted David to be with us on this on this program. But again, due to the technical issues, he couldn't be here. So quickly, I go through how Pakistan ASCD was established. Like in back in 2015, we start we started Islamabad ASCD Connected Community, and the purpose was actually to empower the educators and work on the teachers training programs, providing the professional development. And bringing in uh, bringing the teachers and educators in Pakistan in a bigger family, and uh, ASCD internationally is already working an uh, awesome job, and they have produced a lot of lot of lot of resources for the teachers, for the principals, for the policymakers. Uh, I being the uh, ASCD emerging leader, 2014, uh, 15, it was 15. Uh, we both have emerged a lot now, me and Tim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So well, at that time, we, uh, I got it, uh, emerging leader title in 2015. So I planned to work with the with the local educators in Pakistan. We first started working with the professional development, and uh, we launched a program of No Teacher Left Behind, and yeah. uh, we trained uh, thousands of teachers in across Pakistan, and we worked with the rural areas, the urban areas, and uh, uh, the major focus was to in to work in collaboration with the community that is all already uh, you know up for the, that program now why have we thought to bring ASCD to pakistan because one thing is for sure the pakistani educators lack in terms of resources that are that are not available and uh, secondly the the right authentic resources the biggest problem is the authenticity because ASCD is one of the leading organizations in the world so I found it uh, better to bring ASCD in Pakistan as an affiliate group. So first we started with, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, with Islamabad ASCD connected community, and in a year it converted into an affiliate group and became a part, became Pakistan ASCD. Okay. Then we 
there was a second project of uh, international educational magazine we didn't have the any magazine in pakistan so we launched the reformer so that is the the history behind it today we have uh, many people on board with us on pakistan escd and and now we we have launched the program the project of the thinking school um, i myself with my team members was working on this idea for the last couple of years that we should have a school that is that is focused on uh, upbringing the students who can meet the requirements the economic requirements of the modern world sure the basic problem in pakistani schools was that uh, they are preparing the, the students so they are some of them are doing really good work good work but uh, the major problem was that they are preparing students for the jobs and uh, the, this when the students pass out from their schools they get to the university and the university start starts uh, telling them about the entrepreneurship and the startups by then you know the foundations are not that strong that any any student starts working as an entrepreneur so they face a lot of problems so that is the thing that we actually thought that we have to bring an international chain international thinking schools are already there and they have a proven track record and uh, obviously we wanted to bring a school that has embedded you know uh, uh, ideas of ascd whole child and thinking school because thinking school obviously requires whole child tenants if the child is not healthy child is not safe child is not engaged child is not supported and challenged there is no point of learning there is no point of school so that is a brief background of pakistan is that's great yeah so uh, my next question would be the how thinking school would be different from all the other schools like you ask me or tell me i'm asking you it is <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay right okay so okay uh, uh, let me bring a couple of a uh, uh, few things in front of you and and i'm always very people obviously who who do listen to me and and talk to me and exchange the ideas my team yeah. and, and obviously pakistani scd has a major concern in most of the schools in pakistan the curriculum is developed on the basis of the book list that is available like yeah. when we launched the thinking school in pakistan the first question that people hit on us was that what curriculum you are bringing is that a british curriculum is that an american curriculum is that a canadian curriculum <laughs> and I, i i love these questions because you know the the mindset which has been built over the years in pakistan is that if you are going to bring a school with some uh, english name that must be bringing some british curriculum as well so let me tell everyone very clearly this is not a british curriculum this is not a fin finnish curriculum this is not american curriculum you cannot copy and paste 100 particular uh, 100% curriculum from any country to any other country because the customs are different the the, the norms are different the traditions are different like i cannot ask uh, tammy that give me whole curriculum of singapore and let's apply it in pakistan it will be total disaster so what we do and how thinking school is different in, in around 70% schools or 70 to 80% schools in pakistan do one thing they they go to the publishers they see which books are good i mean look and good forget yeah. about content for a while i mean having good cover page and everything okay. so uh, they select the books now the moment you select the publisher in the first step that is the that is the first wrong step towards schooling the reason is the publisher is not going to decide your mission and vision the publisher is just providing the helping tool so what we do and what is authentic is that you decide what is your mission and vision like for example my organization and my people my team has a vision and mission of preparing the students who will be entrepreneurs by grade 8 and when they will be in grade 8 they will be launching their their uh, e-commerce system they will be launching their websites and they will be selling their their brands whatever they their products and they brand their products now if the, that is the mission and vision we move on with that and we decide the curriculum outline the next step on us and that is the responsibility and obligation is and tammy knows it we we talk a lot about the curriculum and everything we just have to see whether the curriculum we are designing or we are going to provide is aligned with the national curriculum of pakistan given by the constitution or not because it will be totally totally a wrong idea that you bypass what is the constitution is saying because eventually the children of pakistan have to study what the state wants them to study but the, this is not more about the content it is more about the delivery method 
like newton third law i am a physics teacher originally <laughs> newton's third law is everywhere is same i mean a guy in finland in singapore in usa in canada in in anywhere in the world has studied newton's third law that cannot be changed many things are common in the curriculum across the world but the most important thing is how we deliver it so we picked the mission and vision we drew the outline the subject specialist at uh, pakistan acd head office are sitting and the academic wing is working with them we have the director of academics we have the director mark city separately and uh, they are they have worked on the outline and they have worked on the subject specialist are putting in the content and then that uh, that curriculum once it is built is sent to the international consultants like tammy will be looking after the acd tenets whether they are inducted whether they are added to the curriculum or not and dr david will be looking after the the thinking school uh, philosophy is that embedded the thinking tools are there how to teach what to teach how to how to deliver that material so that is one thing so number one how it is different we are not based on publishers we are based on the mission and vision and we select the publishers according to the need it's like i have to travel from city a to city b i will not first choose a vehicle i will decide the vehicle once i decide where i have to go if i'm going to to some desert i will probably going to buy or rent some off road vehicle if i have to travel through ocean obviously i will leave that and i'll get a boat or i'll get a ship okay. so people need to understand that is the major difference between us and other schools the second thing is we did not offer a play group nursery and kindergarten because we firmly believe that the maria montessori philosophy is a very very uh, practical and it is very close to the right idea of the acd whole child and the and thinking school that is why we brought authentic montessori i don't say pure montessori we bring authentic montessori because actual montessori goes up to grade 5 6 7 8 9 but we are offering junior montessori senior montessori and advanced montessori that is the second change uh, second difference the third difference is that this is the first time in pakistan that any school is going to put a barrier in terms of teacher selection a school is awesome a school is great if it has trained teachers i spent my whole life in teaching and training the people and obviously my team believes in the in the same philosophy as well and worldwide any good model follows the same thing so we we put the barriers uh, unfortunately in pakistan because there is no licensing system we had to put this barrier on us on, on ourselves by ourselves so what we do we when we uh, recruit the teachers we have put an online test for them if they if they uh, they pass the test they will be shortlisted and that is not about the subject that is about their approach whether they are progressive or they are not progressive we need the progressive teachers who are not uh, actually uh you know afraid of doing experiments in the classroom our classrooms are collaborative our our uh, teachers are progressive once they complete once they are shortlisted they will be going through the interviews and once they are confirmed they have to immediately complete three acd international certifications once they will be doing those uh, online certifications then they will be in the hands of the international consultants and they will be training them online due to this uh, pandemic that we are going through we we are afraid that we won't be able to conduct face to face trainings but even then the on ground people in pakistan and our master trainers will be in touch with them the third thing is <clears throat> that we firmly believe that the lesson plan is the autonomy of the teacher a lesson plan that works in a rural area may not work in an urban area so there should be no no, no actually sort of unification in this thing we give the theme of work we give the the outline we give how to teach what to teach but let the teachers build their lesson plans but who will approve those lesson plans obviously the coordinators on the campus the the principal on the campus plus the head office in pakistan acd will be actually monitoring those lesson plans as well the fourth major difference between us and other schools is that in our model campus we don't have any table and chair we have collaborative classrooms only one classroom has tables and chairs so the classrooms are built like the, there is there's one class which has a stadium set up there's a there are three steps uh, in in the classroom and the students can sit can you know on first step on second step may sit on the carpet may sit on the chair may sit on the on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, cushions whatever they like i mean 
we fundamentally believe that the thinking school or any school in the world should work like the lab of a mother and uh, if the child is not feeling good in the lab then the mother needs to adjust the things according to the according to the child's need that's 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 how we are different i think i yeah. can so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell me, why did you want to be the consultant? Why did you choose to be the consultant for Thinking Schools Pakistan? Um, a number of reasons. And Umer was really good about talking about a lot of them. Um, I often get messages from Umer asking me about, what do you think about this? Do you want to work on that? And I really value the way he thinks and the, the progressive nature of where he wants to take education in Pakistan. So that's something that I think is really valuable for the teachers and students there. Um, and it's also, I think, just um, it, it's kind of like a um, passion project, too, where I'm like, it, it's 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 getting me into uh, more of a consultant role, which I've been wanting to do. And um, it's exciting to be able to kind of bring the whole child piece together with this new piece at the thinking school. So um, when I reached out to David to talk to him about bringing um, the thinking schools over to Pakistan, I got really excited after talking to him because I'm like, well, this just fits exactly into what I believe about um, how school should look and all of the, I started reading a bunch of the documents he sent me. So um, it just fits really well into um, what I believe about education. So that's that's a big piece for me and why I decided to, to move along with it. Okay, that's great. And another question, what do you think? How is a whole child school different from contemporary schools? Um, I think that it's it's a push towards really thinking about um, a student as a person rather than just a test taker or a student who has a book in their hand. Um, so I, I like the direction that this project is taking with the, the th thinking maps and thinking models and making sure that kids' needs are really met in an environment in which they can thrive. So it's built for them. It's not built by people who don't know what a school should look like. Um, it's it's set up by educators. And I just think that that's the way schools should be anywhere. So it's, it's an exciting project. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. So, sir, like you said that we will be looking forward to the curriculum, we will be looking forward to schools. So how do you think we will be maintaining the quality? How will Pakistan ASCD maintain the quality? Then? Okay, uh, so the basic thing is, obviously, the quality is the major concern. And that is why we have Tammy, we have Dr. David on, on yeah. board with us. And we have, a, we have a huge team at Pakistan ASCD headquarters as well. Now, uh, the major thing is, obviously, we are going through the modern school and the franchise system as well. But when when we talk about the franchise model, the franchise model is that a private investor brings the money and says that I want to open the school. The franchise business is a lot in Pakistan these days. Many yeah. schools are doing their franchises. But what we do, we do not franchise academics. And that is the most important thing, because when we start giving uh, franchises to the to the uh, to uh, to any private investor and we say that now everything is in in your hands and you decide whatever the academic should be it, it, it leads to a disaster again because then the people start you know uh, uh, taking the advantage of uh, hiring the people who are not well paid the teachers are not competent the, the system doesn't actually you know uh, go through a proper system or the school doesn't go through a proper system so now what we do, we say that fine, you are you want to invest in the schooling business, go ahead, we are with you, but we are not going to franchise academics. The principle will be decided with a mutual agreement between the investor and Pakistan ESCD. The we will be providing the curriculum, we will be providing the training, we will be facilitating in the certifications and everything, and we will be monitoring what is happening on the campuses. Like uh, maintaining quality means you keep a continuous check. So the trainings are not randomly picked. Like um, me and, and uh, Tammy has one good friend. His name is wonderful. His Highness Fred Andy, who wrote <laughs> a, the, the professional development that that sticks. 
<laughs> so uh, I love his book. I mean, it's it's a really yeah. thoughtful book. And uh, he says that the, the 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 professional development that doesn't stick is not of any use. So these are not handpicked uh, uh, certifications or handpicked randomly handpicked you know uh, workshops. They have a certain purpose. They are aligned with the curriculum. And we and whoever is the teacher trained can only teach that curriculum. L let me add one more thing. Many people contacted me and my team, and they said that okay, give us the curriculum. We said, excuse me, hold on. You cannot do the, anything with this curriculum until your teachers are trained on this curriculum. So yeah. the, the thing is that whatever we want to deliver, we have to uh, maintain the quality in terms of a direct uh, support from the head office. So every school that will be on board will be with us uh, through our ERP system, which is very strong. Any teacher who is, will be uploading the lesson plan will be seen at the head office. Every student who will be submitting the assignments with the and, and the formative assessments will be monitored through the uh, head office uh, ERP. And obviously, we will be going to the schools uh, thrice a year to develop the QRR reports. The quality checks will be there. And plus, this is the only school which is continuously going to progress. Like today, we are opening the thinking school. And we see that in three years, it will become a thinking school international. So okay. whoever is Oh, going to open the thinking school will become eventually a thinking school international like any other international school with the same uh, ideas same uh, thoughts and same models and same practices that is one thing the second thing is we are offering stem not computer science not the traditional computer science so when we offer the stem and we have advanced robotics on board with us and uh, who have uh, who have provided us the complete curriculum on it with a clear understanding that the students will be a master of C++, will be master of Python, will be master of Linux operating system, will be able to program and obviously develop their robots and uh, whatever they are learning in their science class, in their maths class, in their uh, other, other classes, they will be bringing that to the STEM lab and will be doing the things on hand. So that is one thing. And, and with that in option, we are offering uh, media and arts right from grade one. And that is the most challenging part for us at the moment, because in Pakistan, no school offers media studies right from grade one. We, no. have, a wonderful, we have a wonderful consultant on board with us. Who is, who is a Pakistan? His name is Nomer and he's son of uh, Negar, a very, uh, very famous cartoonist of Pakistan. And he's a UCLA graduate and a wonderful guy. He's working on, uh, he has already developed a lot of things. And we are obviously looking forward to bring a dynamic curriculum that like for example if you're you want your kid to be uh, an expert of animated movies or the cartoons the first thing is you have to write the script you have to select the characters and that brings your skills from the english classroom you learn about language you learn about uh, you know the characters and uh, and every every that thing now the most important thing is that we offer also we also offer four languages that is French, German, Arabic, and uh, Mandarin, Chinese. So languages are there. That is why we are uh, we are claiming that we are doing the right things in the right direction. So to answer, to cut short that point, that how we are maintaining the quality, we are going into every single academic procedure that is happening on the school, whether it's a franchise school or, or a model school. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, that, that was a bigger question that we can talk about quality, but maintaining it through proper means is another story. Yeah. You know. So Tammy, why do you think thinking school is different, uh, is better than other schools? We already talked about how different it is, but can you just elaborate how better it is from other schools? Oh, me? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Um, I think Umer had uh, mentioned before um, how it's not really about what we're teaching, but how we're teaching it. And so I think this is a big shift in the way teachers are going to have to think about what teaching and learning looks like. So um, we are seeing this kind of shift right now in a lot of places where there's less focus on the content and more and more on problem solving and ways of thinking and um, finding problems that are going to need solutions and being innovative. So um, if we uh, look at some of the 
the the models that David has developed, and we'll let him elaborate that on those in his show. But um, the the thinking is it gets very deep and meaningful, and so it's not just about um, that kind of surface level bit that a lot of classrooms get into. It's just it's much deeper than that, and I think that that um, is really going to help students prosper, as through, especially if they're starting, you know, as well, starting at any level, but if they're starting little with that level of thinking already and they develop that through their school career, um, you know, they're, they're going to be in the, heading in a good direction. Yeah, it must be, I guess. So. <laughs> okay, so you talked about franchises and model schools. The Pakistan ASCD will be giving franchise and Pakistan ASCD will be launching a model school as well. So how would you make sure that a franchise is doing equally good as the model school? Okay. Uh, we already have launched a model school in, in Islamabad that is on the park road. And uh, yes, franchises will be given by Pakistan ACT, but we are very particular about it. Uh, the very first thing is when, when the franchises, uh, we, we are being contacted by lots of people every day. And uh, we are very selective in this thing. Number one, the one who is going to take the franchise, he must be uh, having some sense of education. It's not about purely business, it's about education as well. And the guy is obviously uh, up to support Pakistan ESCDs and thinking school mission and vision, uh, bringing, up, uh, bringing up a thinking school. So when we say that uh, how the, the franchise and the model school are on the same page, look, there is a major difference in Pakistan. Okay. Uh, the the good education, uh, the the, the so-called good education that is given in Pakistan is actually actually kept by the elite schools, and they don't don't give their franchises at all. They give another kind of schooling, which is uh, not up to that level, but somewhere here because the fee difference is huge. So the elite schools provide uh, say something at at price X, then the 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 franchises are given at price Y, which is much lesser than X. Because uh, obviously, again, I don't know the reasons behind that, but we are not doing this thing. We are bringing the same level that any elite school can provide, but at a comparatively lesser fee that is affordable for the parents. So the second thing is my personal, this is my personal opinion that why if a parent is paying a reasonable amount and investing money in the, in the child, why should be given, why that parent should be given a substandard curriculum? based on the on the publishers not I, I don't say that publishers are substandard i say that publishers are no one to tell us how to teach because this is our our, our choice like if i say think that the number system should be used at grade one and my subject specialist recommends it i will go through uh, go through several publishers and i'll pick the book that supports our idea so those are the tools those are not the policy makers for us so that is first thing so when we have a very powerful ERP system, Centera uh, is a company that is uh, the IT partner with us. So if a teacher is teaching uh, something in the model school and uploads the lesson plan, that lesson plan can be seen by a franchise teacher at any part of this country, in any part of the country. Now that is one thing. The second thing is whatever is the procedures, the, the academic calendar is same for any franchise and for any model school. So the model school is obviously direct investments or directly uh, monitored or owned by Pakistan ESCD. And the franchise is obviously owned by someone else who, who brings the money and set up the, the, the infrastructure, hires the teachers and everything. But again, I repeat, we don't franchise academics, which is happening right now with most of the franchises. We say that fine, you invest the money, let our head office support you and, and give you the, the right resources. So you excel as much as any top line school in the country. So franchise doesn't mean to be a substandard school. It should be a top line school as well. That's what we believe. And that's how we are going to maintain. It. So there will be collaborative classroom. If we have a three step stadium in our model campus, we will prefer that our franchise schools do have the same thing because there are reasons behind that. Okay. If we have a collaborative classroom and we, we don't have the classrooms, actually, we have subject rooms. We have a maths room, we have a science room, we have uh, uh, English room, I mean, literature room, we have STEM labs. The students will be moving from maths room to the science room, to the English room, to the, to the social studies room. 
because that makes them engaged that makes them you know if imagine a situation me tani and you we are sitting for right straight 6 hours on a chair and the people are coming and telling us how the world is working i mean we will we will just burst into pieces that like what the what the heck is going on with us sure. this is what happens to the children they they are not engaged because they are sitting at the same point at the same place in the same chair for the for right for 6 hours that's what we have what we have broken down and we have developed the subject rooms so franchise and the model schools both will be connected both will be on the same page both will be following the same frameworks both will be going through the same uh, assessments and both will be directly seen by the international consultants and by the head offices okay thank you so much that's good because that was another question that how you're going to maintain a more maintain the same quality in a model school and in a franchise because things have been very different here and i have been witnessing them that how different they are it's it's lovely having both of you uh for the discussion and i'm just bursting with questions so another question that you said that uh we will be having languages different foreign languages right from montessori advanced montessori so do you think children will be able to cope up with those languages at such an early age Okay, so uh, when I uh, talk to my academics, Wang, obviously it's not like that. They will be going for all the languages. It's oh. about the aptitude. It's about it's about the about the choice. Like in in very early years, the students are in more in some school or not most most of the schools are actually going through a, through one practice. They want to write. You know, writing skill is developed later. The first thing is seeing and observing and feeling things. That is what. Maria Montessori actually uh, uh, told us and taught the people. The first thing is that when we offer the languages, obviously initially it is very difficult for the child to select the language. If they want to go to all languages, let them go. Okay. So once they move up to the higher classes, then they will start going to the uh, to the to narrow it down. Like for example, our STEM lab and the media lab are in the one hall, and there is a separation. so like a student is doing work with the media studies working on the animation suddenly got some gets an interest in in stem the student may switch can go to the stem go explore it because the interest develops where you are mostly engaged by heart from from the core of your heart you feel engaged i feel engaged in my classroom because because i feel engaged obviously i love it i mean talking to the students listening to the ideas and you know cracking jokes and thinking about the new new things that engages me imagine you th- you send me and you ask me to join police that doesn't engage me i mean not engage me so it is boring for me obviously or you ask me to start neurosurgery i don't know about this thing and i i, I don't feel engaged in you know opening the skull and and doing the things so i i feel it barbaric but uh, the thing is that we we open the the way the, the roads for the for the students like from what to say they can go for french language they can go for arabic they can go for things and they are not going to do lot of homework there is actually no bad policy in the school and there is no standardized exam till grade 5 uh i i must quote jean piaget who says that you should not introduce numerics until grade 7 because the students and the children are not able to comprehend what is number system what is numeric so uh we follow the what research says as demi said that the thinking school is a research based authentic school sure. we don't we don't go by our by our you know intuitions that <laughs> this is happening for the last 700 years i mean many things had been wrong for 700 years that people changed it's okay so there is a huge huge variety for the for the students and and they can obviously select and move on that is that is how we are offering okay thank you so much So another question uh Tammy uh we are fully aware of how the child will be healthy safe engaged and when we talk about the child being supported mm-hmm. so i would like to go about your uh, words that i usually hear regarding the thinking schools and this project in pakistan that it is pretty much based on no teacher left behind Mm-hmm. So when we talk about supported the child can be supported through some excellent and you know fully certified staff yes 
and the thinking school does say that no teacher will be entering the classroom without being properly trained so when we talk about teacher trainings how would you be going about it what is what is the essential thing that needs to be inculcated in teacher training so that they can support the child in its two means um well there's a few things and so it's not just about delivering content to the prospective teachers, but it's also just making sure that they have the mindset and that kind of goes to that initial um, exam that they would take just to kind of know where they sit um, in terms of if they're progressive or traditional kind of thing. Um, we have to make sure it's the right people coming in. And so that's a big step forward in this project um, that's not something that's in place right now. So um, we have to make sure that people have the right mindset, the right skill base, and then, you know, we then we can build the knowledge. So we want to make sure that people, um, their, their pedagogical beliefs match a whole child framework. So those are the people that it's going to be um, fairly easy for them to step into this kind of new realm of um, the tenants. So they might not be um, like, you know, we how we always say it's not rocket science, because it's really not, it's it's logical and it's, it's what makes sense for kids in learning environments. So we need, we're doing the same for teachers. So we wanna make sure that if we're supporting students, we're supporting teachers. So we're doing that with um, the, the, the professional learning sessions which <laughs> that will end up being virtual um, just with all the things happening right now. Um, we'll have some, some other pieces from ASCD that are built into the network system. And then of course there's the advisors, there's myself, there's the whole faculty at ASCD is available for us basically. Um, so whatever a teacher needs support with, we'll figure out a way to make sure that they feel um, the support so that they can support their students because we know if the teachers don't have it, then the kids won't have it. Okay, thank you so much. I, so I would like to add one thing. I would like to add one thing to, the, to Tammy, uh, whatever Tammy said, obviously, that is uh, what is decided already. Uh, one thing is that the teachers who will be inducted, they will be first trained on the ASCD whole child tenants. Okay. Like they must know what is ASC, the whole child. And it's not about like when we say that the child will be healthy, it's not about, you know, you allocate a 40 minutes period on health. And it's not about you give a 40 minutes period on safety and you take a paper and you take a test. It's not. We need these things uh, uh, confirmed and cleared because this is the concept that usually we get that if these are the uh, five tenants of a whole child, so perhaps there will be five lessons, 40 minutes each no. telling them. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, it will never be like that. It like okay. we want that every child in the school is healthy. So it's not about giving lectures. Lectures don't, you know, uh, when we talk about the, the, the methods and the medium of the learning, the lecture is the least efficient way of learning, by the way. And uh, it's not about lecturing. It's not about 40 minutes class. Health, safety, engagement, support, and challenge learning is added. It is actually embedded in the curriculum. So when we teach something, it's there is a direct curriculum, there is an indirect curriculum. Absolutely. So the thinking school curriculum or the thinking curriculum is actually going to build habits. Like you must be safe. In Pakistan, there are lots, lots of cases. I, I, I pick one example. There are lots of cases of child molestation and harass, harassment. The children do not know what is the what is the what is a good touch and what is a bad touch, and you don't give any any lecture on it. You actually groom the students in a way that they understand that this is a good touch, this is a bad touch, this is molestation, this is harassment, and how to react, whom to be taught, told, and whom to be informed in that situation. So when we talk about safety, it's not about physical safety; it's about keeping the child away from bullying keeping a child away from harassment, the molestation, either by the adult, by the fellow, by, by the classroom, uh, classmate, or by the by a senior student. The safety in terms of physical, in terms of emotional safety is, if I am not safe, I am not going to learn anything. That is the basic rule. 
So we teach these talents through the curriculum. The curriculum is designed in a way that there will be healthy habits, there will be information and knowledge and understanding of how the microbes are developed in the body, how the uh, these days we feel that there is a there is a lack there is a lack of awareness among the among among the masses in Pakistan about the corona because they have not, never been taught about health in the way they, they should be taught. So they, they start working, you know, on the random things. Every day we go through the Facebook and, and uh, social media and we get a lot of lot of recipes to recover from Corona. This is this shows that how 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 much we lack in terms of, you know, awareness in social and, and health awareness. And one thing, one thing should be very clear to everyone. Education and its impacts are not seen in one day. It is not seen in a monthly test. It is not seen in a midterm exams. Its effects come after 30 years. So we are adhering to ASCD whole child. We are adhering to OECD uh, Learner Campus 2030, and we are adhering to the Thinking School philosophy. And I just see one question from uh, from uh, uh, one of the viewers. They say that who, who will be your publisher? Again, I say there will be no single publisher. Try to understand. We think that okay, fine. You name the publishers. I don't want to name anyone here. So there is publisher A, there is publisher B, there is publisher C. So there are supposed three publishers in Pakistan right now. I may or my team may select, I, I'm no one to select actually. My academic wing has to select publishers who are adhering to the to the aims and the objectives of, of the curriculum. So probably uh, publisher A is going to be the part of this curriculum or their books are to be part of the curriculum from grade one to grade three. There might be multiple publishers at the same level. And if we don't find any publisher adhering to, to our mission and vision and the curriculum that we have devised, then we are going to self-publish. Our subject specialists are competent enough to build the, the, the worksheets, the, the handouts, the, the, the manuals, and the books as well. And we have done a lot of work. We have already done a lot of work. We have selected the book list and we, we have actually decided what we are going to do. And if there is any area where the publisher is not able to give us the right content or the book, we will be going to self-publish that. Okay. That's, sorry, can I add on to, as you were talking, Umer, um, we're, I think it's just kind of piggybacking on a couple of things about like the publishing piece, the content and supporting teachers, kind of all of that together. Um, in, the, in the professional learning for teachers, the way that it's set up, it's so that teachers are engaging with the content. So it's not just that lecture piece, like here's the 40 minutes on the safety indicators and here it is, read it, whatever. It's it's evaluating it in a way that um, will make the educators think about what it is they actually have to do with it. So a lot of what I do in my workshops, and I know David does the same, because it's very it's a lot of meta work it's a lot of thinking um we're we're modeling things that we would want the teachers to do with their students anyway so it's not just the delivery of the content it's how the content is presented to the teachers and then they can take that and bring that forward as well so that's what a lot of um, professional learning is looking like right now it's not just the the lecture big lecture room and you're just sitting there listening or not listening um, you're engaging with the content so that when that when you go back to use it it's easier to use because you have already done a bit of practice with it thank you so much and it was wonderful talking to both of you and a lot of questions have been one thing, one thing that i just saw one comment and uh, because i have open facebook right now okay. and uh, one of the viewers asked that which board you are going to follow Okay. I must clarify this. Okay, please. We are not going to follow any board. The thing is that right from Montessori till grade eight, we developed a curriculum as per thinking school. Now, it's the choice of the school, whether okay. they want to go for Cambridge, whether they want to go for IB, they want to go IB. I don't, I don't, don't think so that IB will be compatible because they want PYP and MYP and then DYP. yeah, yeah. <clears throat> the second is the local boards in Pakistan. And third is the Al Khan board in Pakistan. These are three three major boards that we follow. 
So the students who are going for O and A levels by CAIE, they can go for that. They can go for the board exams, any board exams, because after grade eight, our schools and um, whether franchise or the model school will be following uh, the, the, the board that is suggested by the investor. Like we in Islamabad are opening, have opened a model school and our school will be going uh, through the Cambridge stream. Depending on the number of students as well, if some, if we get a bulk of students in uh, in the model campus that that want to appear uh, uh, for the local boards, we will go for that. There is no problem in that. So the curriculum that is devised is actually going to support every board. That is not an issue. That this is a Cambridge board or this is a this is a Mardan board or Lahore board or Islamabad federal board. No, it is not. You can go for any board after grade eight. That is one thing. The second thing that I forgot mentioning is that uh, in Pakistan, in most of the schools are filled with the, with the number of teachers, uh, sorry, number of students. <clears throat> the thinking school model campus has devised a policy that our building has a maximum capacity of 505 students. The day 505 is reached, the admissions will be closed and that will be a legal binding with the franchise as well. We will assess their buildings, we will assess their classrooms and we'll tell them that this classroom cannot sustain more than say 25 students. So don't fill the classroom. The moment you do it, we will ob obviously be objecting that one and we'll pull back from the franchises as well. So once you ask me that uh, how you maintain the quality, we will be kept keeping the checks on the franchises as well, that the classrooms are not overloaded, overcrowded. Otherwise, they the teachers cannot manage it. It's, it's humanly impossible that you fill the classroom with 80 students and you expect everyone to be scoring, you know, going for a gold medal. That we are not going to do that. So uh, that is how we are we are planning the things and uh, we are moving ahead. That's great. Yeah, that's great. So a lot of questions have been addressed. Well, I'm sure there will be more questions, but we don't have that much time to sit here and addressing all of them. So we will be posting links on our Facebook and our YouTube channel so that there can be more collab, more interaction with people who want to think about it, who want to learn more about the thinking schools and who are pretty. There are people who are very excited about this project uh, powered by Pakistan ARCD, that is the thinking schools. and. We wish best of luck to them and thank you so much for being with us. Please thank you. Next episode. Let's hope to have Mr. David with us in the next episode as well. Sounds thank good. We will. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Just stop button on your panel and you need to stop it. Okay. <laughs>